One of the main differences between Cubase and Nuendo is the Dolby Atmos workflow. Nuendo allows the use of the internal as well as the external Dolby Atmos renderer, and by contrast, Cubase limits us to the internal Dolby Atmos rendering workflow. People therefore often say that if you want to use the external Dolby Atmos renderer for whatever reason, you need to switch over to Nuendo. This, however, is not completely true. You can actually use the external Dolby Atmos renderer with Cubase just fine. The only thing that you have to do is you have to follow the Dolby workflow and not the Steinberg workflow. So I felt that it's time to create a video to show you how to set everything up. And this is what we're going to do today. We're going to use Cubase, we're going to use the external Dolby Atmos renderer, and we're going to set everything up in order to get a little Dolby Atmos project going. But first of all, hello everybody. In case you're new here, my name is Michael Wagner. I am a digital media educator with more than 30 years of experience in higher education. And on this channel, I talk about digital media, game design, and spatial audio. Today about Dolby Atmos and Cubase. If any of those topics interest you, I invite you to subscribe or join our Discord community. Invite link is in the description below, or there's also a QR code here somewhere. And with that being said, let's get into Cubase. Before I get started, a couple of limitations. First of all, we're going to work with Cubase today, obviously, because that's the topic of the video. Now, if you are not a Cubase user, you should still be able to get some value out of this video simply because the workflow that we're going to use is just the traditional Dolby Atmos workflow, and that applies to any digital audio workstation out there. So everything that I'm going to show uh, with Cubase today uh, works in any digital audio workstation pretty much the same way. The second limitation, however, is a hard limitation. We are on a Mac operating system, and the reason for that is because the external Dolby Atmos renderer only exists for Mac operating systems. So if you are a Windows user, unfortunately, you're stuck with the internal Dolby Atmos workflow in Cubase. We can't do anything with the external, unfortunately. Uh, that's just the way it is. Now, um, with that being said, let's have a listen on what we have here. Uh, it's a very simple loop, really. Uh, I once again put something together from a couple of samples that I got from a sample developer who produces really, really nice kind of sample packs for game design and uh, movie and film TV productions. I'm going to leave a link in the description below, and then I just added a, um, a drum loop, really. That's what I did. So let's have a listen. So once again, we have uh, here a synth. And then we have uh, the drum loop, and I'm using Groove Agent for that. And then we have uh, two additional uh, drum loops. That's sort of this squeaky thingy. And then we have uh, some bongos or toms. And to take together, this makes a really nice loop. Now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, turn that into a Dolby Atmos project. And uh, for that purpose, we're going to use one of those tracks in order to create a bed, a Dolby Atmos bed, and the other three tracks are going to become our objects. So in the end, what we're going to end up with is a 7.1.2 bed, a Dolby Atmos bed, and uh, six objects, which essentially are the three stereo pairs of the remaining three tracks. Now, the way you do that is completely up to you. I'm just going to do that for demonstration purposes. Yes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the drum loop, I'm going to turn that into, into the bed, and I'm going to use the three um, sample loops in order to create the six objects. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to turn a drum track into a Dolby Atmos bed track. Once again, there are no rules. I'm just using that for demonstration purposes. And for this purpose, let's add a group track that is going to be a 7.1.2, which is the standard channel layout for Dolby Atmos bed track. So let's add the track. And then we are going to route the um, drum track into the Dolby Atmos bed. And then let's maybe also change the position slightly what do I need to do? Uh, yeah, let, let's move that maybe back a little and uh, bring that a little in and then maybe move it up a little just so that we have information on all the channels. And the final thing that I'm going to do is I'm also going to add a little bit of a reverb into the Dolby Atmos bed. And the reason I'm doing that is primarily in order to have like information on all 10 channels. So let me maybe add cinematic rooms I like that one. And uh, then I'm just going to make sure that I have um, essentially a little bit of the dry signal in here. So let me just play the uh, drum track alone. And that sounds okay. So this is the way we're going to leave it. Let me just see if everything sounds correctly together. It's 
maybe bring it down a little. Yeah, that's okay. Once again, this is just for demonstration purposes. There's probably a lot of reverb on there, but that's fine for what you're doing here. So the next thing I need to do is I need to open up the Adobe Atmos renderer and make sure that all the communication between Cubase and the renderer is set up correctly. So let's go into our Adobe Atmos renderer. That's where it is. Let's open up the renderer here. And let's go into the Adobe Atmos renderer preferences. And in the preferences, we want to make sure that the output device is the output device that you are using and the input device is the Dolby Audio Bridge. Now, the Dolby Audio Bridge, for those of you who don't know, is a 130-channel audio device that uh, moves the audio from the digital audio workstation into the Dolby Atmos renderer. And we're going to use those uh, channels in order to communicate the audio of the objects as well as of the bad channels. Let's just take note of the frame rate because that's something that we might need to change. It's currently set at 30 frames per second. I think that should be just fine. And uh, then essentially let's... Uh, I'm going to struggle with the windows a little here. Uh, normally the best way to do that is really if you have like two monitors and you have one window on one monitor and kind of cubes on the other. But here I'm just going to kind of... Uh, juggle those around a little. So let me just click that away for a second. And then we need to make sure that we can communicate with the Adobe Atmos renderer. So in Cubase, we need to go into the, uh, sorry, in Cubase, we need to go into the uh, studio setup. And in the studio setup, we now no longer want to uh, connect to the actual interface because that's something that the Adobe Atmos renderer is doing. We actually want to connect to the Adobe Atmos renderer and that means that we need to select the Adobe Audio Bridge here. Uh, we're going to switch that over. And we press OK, and then let's prepare the uh, studio connection. So the idea now is that we, for every uh, bad channel and for every object, what we need to do is we need to, oops, that's the wrong window. We need to uh, set up, um, we need to set up a bus. So that that is essentially the basic idea. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is, and maybe, let me see, can I remove that here? Yep. So what we're going to do is we're first going to add a 7.1.2 bus, which is going to be Adobe Atmos bed. So let's add a 7.1.2 and let's call that Atmos, Atmos bed. And that's going to connect to the, we just need to make sure that the 10 channels are now connected to the first 10 channels in the Dolby Atmos bridge because those are going to be sent to the Dolby Atmos renderer. Now, for those of you who have paid close attention, you might have noticed that because I now have a 7.1.2 output track, I would not have needed the group track that I used in order to hold the uh, the reverb. And that's really a matter of preference. Um, I usually kind of work with a group track to kind of separate out the bad track, but you could put the reverb on the uh, output track as well and just use the output track as a bad track but because we have it on the group track there's one additional step that we need to do is and that is we need to send the bed into the actual output into the atmos bed output and that should essentially now move the first 10 channels into the first 10 channels of the dolby atmos renderer so if i'm not playing everything i should just hear the the drum track that's the groove agent track so let's just see if that's actually what's what's happening and indeed it is. So I'm now receiving the first 10 channels. I'm not yet receiving any of the other because I have not yet prepared the outputs. And for that purpose, all I really need to do is I need to create separate outputs for each individual object. And once again, we can have up to 118 uh, individual mono objects, or in this particular case, we have stereo objects. So I'm going to have three uh, mono pairs, um, three stereo objects. And for that purpose, uh, I'm just going to add the appropriate output uh, settings or the appropriate output buses. So let's add three, and we're going to add three stereo buses. And let's call them Atmos object. And let's add those buses. Let's just make sure that the numbering is correctly. So we have uh, the first object coming in at uh, channels 11 and 12. Um, the second object at 13 and 14 and the third object at 16 and and uh, that's weird. Um, so we actually want to have that at 15 and 16. Uh, so that's fine. 
I'm not quite sure why I did it that way, but that's just the way it happened. Um, and uh, and then, um, so uh, the final thing that we need to do is we need to, in order for the audio to actually be sent to the Dolby Atmos render, we now need to send the individual objects into these output uh, connections. So let's just send the first drum sample into the first bed. And uh, we need to remember what channels they were in. This were channels 11 and 12 because we're going to need that later. Then we are going to do the same thing for the second one, second object, ob Atmos object that were, that were channels 13 and 14. And then we have the final one, which are channels 15 and 16, which once again, Cubis for whatever reason, numbered the other way around, I'm not quite sure why. So let's see, currently uh, all I'm really doing is I'm sending the audio. Now, if I'm playing the, um, the, the loop now, uh, I would think that I actually hear everything already in the render, but that's not completely correct. So let me just see what is happening here. So I can see that the render is already receiving the audio, but it is not really playing the audio. Now, why is that? Now, the reason for that is because the renderer is not yet receiving any positional information about those objects. And uh, this is actually one of the things where the uh, the use of the external renderer differs from the use of the internal renderer in Cubis. In, in the internal render in Cubis, you could simply use the, uh, the panning device that Cubis has. With the external renderer, you actually need the uh, music panner device that is provided by Dolby. So what we need to do is we need to add a music panner, a Dolby music panner to each of our object tracks in order to make sure that the object, the positional information is also communicated to the Dolby Atmos renderer. So let's open up the first here and let's add a Dolby Atmos music panner. Here we have it. And uh, the next thing we need to do is we need to make sure that the object pair matches. This is the first, uh, this is the first uh, object. And if you remember, the first object were channels 11 and, third, uh, sorry, 11 and 12. So we need to kind of select it here, 11 and 12. And uh, then let's maybe already kind of do some, a little bit of a panning. Um, so kind of to, to, um, to kind of make it a little bit more interesting. So let's maybe kind of move that back. Um, that were sort of the... Um, and let's maybe have, kind of increase the size and let's maybe move it up a little. Those were kind of the, the that was kind of the, um, the, the, the squeaky part of the drums. And uh, then let's do the same thing for the second um, object. So in the second object, let's add a panner, Adobe Atmos Music Panner. And uh, let's also kind of uh, position that a bit those were these uh, tom toms or bongos or whatever they were. So let's move them maybe completely to the sides. And then, and let's just leave it in the horizontal plane. And then let's do the thing for the third one. And in the third one, we are going to add a panner. Uh, and Let's maybe, I don't know. Let's let's maybe just kind of move that back just a little and up maybe. So that we have, it's kind of slightly above. And uh, that should now kind of move the uh, positional information into the Dolby Atmos renderer. So let's just see if that's actually what's happening. And it is not, and if you have followed me you might have noticed that I have not yet set up the channel counts or the channels for those. So let's let's do that. The second uh, was uh, at uh, channels 13 and channel 14. And then the third one is 15 and 16. Now, in case you're wondering, you could also put this uh, this music panels to the output tracks. I, I just did it on the object tracks directly. That's fine. And let's see if that now kind of sends all the audio to our Dolby Atmos render. And if, in fact, it does. So we see all the individual, and in the render, we can essentially see the individual objects. So we have sort of the first, this was the, the kind of these bigger objects were kind of the, let me just see if I can solo that here. So kind of that's the, 
dass wir kein auf das squeaky thingy. Dass wir das Bongos und dann das sind. Das hier in der Front. But there's just one thing missing and you might notice that uh, essentially currently the Adobe Atmos renderer is not yet receiving any time information. Um, now this is one of the things that we need to set up manually if you're using the internal renderer that is done within QBase. Um, but here we essentially need to also send the timecode information from the QBase uh, digital audio workstation into the Adobe Atmos renderer. Now this is actually done very, very simply. All we really need to do is we need to add a timecode plugin. And for that, we need to, first of all, add an additional track or an additional bus. And this is going to be a mono bus. We're going to only use that in order to send the timecode information. So let's call that LTC. Let's add that bus. And the timecode information, you can actually set that in the renderer, but by default, it is uh, expecting the timecode at channel number 129. So we need to select 129. And then the final thing uh, we need to do is we need to add the timecode plugin. So let's uh, add a timecode plugin here, LTC, Adobe LTC generator. And that will essentially send the timecode. We need to make sure that sort of the frame rate matches. This is set to 30 FPS. So if you if you are in the Adobe Atmos render, make sure that that is set there to 30 frames per second as well. We are working with Dolby Atmos Music, so there isn't really kind of much information that we that we have with the frame frame rate, but uh, it needs to just match. That's sort of the basic uh, basic idea here. And then let's see. Uh, and we now should actually receive all the audio, and we should also receive the timecode information. And indeed, we do. So this is really everything I need to do now. Why would you want to work with the external Dolby Atmos renderer? Now the, the reason um, is actually sometimes quite simple that you might need a higher channel count. In the Dolby Atmos renderer, what you can do is you can uh, essentially kind of create different room configurations. So what you can do, for example, is you can have higher speaker configurations. If you're working in a 9.1.6 studio, for example, and you don't want to bother kind of upgrading to Nuendo, uh, you don't really have to go through the Nuendo route. You can actually use the external renderer here and uh, kind of uh, work with a higher channel count in your speaker setup. And the second uh, advantage of using the external renderer is that it has the ability to uh, do a speaker calibration. And that essentially means we can uh, essentially fine-tune our speaker setup and we can make sure that we are Dolby certified if this is something that's important for us. So there are certain situations where uh, the use of the external Dolby Atmos render is of an advantage. And um, you know, kind of if you're working with Cubase, there's actually no need to upgrade to Nuendo. You can actually do that in Cubase directly. Now, this is really everything I wanted to say today. Thanks again for watching. Now, the reason I made this video today is because I'm preparing another video where I'm comparing the three different options that you have if you want to get into Dolby Atmos production. Uh, one being the using an internal renderer in your digital audio workstation. The second one being the external renderer from Dolby. And the third one uh, being the Fiedler, Fiedler Audio Dolby Atmos Composer. Each of those approaches has its advantages and disadvantages. And I'm preparing a video and kind of showcasing why you want to go with what kind of approach. And I thought it makes sense to at least once touch how to use the external Dolby Atmos renderer with Cubase. And this is what we did today. If you have any questions or comments, please use the comment section below or join our Discord community. In that link is in the description below. And with that being said, see you at the next video.